Before we hop into today's show, I got one question for you guys, and that is grade the Chicago Bulls offseason. I want you guys to go back to school and give me an A, B, C, D, or F. Give me your grade for the Chicago Bulls offseason. On today's edition of the Bulls Report, we're going to be giving a letter grade to every single move the Bulls made this offseason. My name is Patrick Seatman. Welcome in to the Bulls Report by Chat Sports. A fun show for us to break down today because the Bulls made five really key and probably big moves for their roster in this upcoming year. So I decided let's hop in my bag and I'll be giving letter grades for each and every move. Starting off with, I think probably my favorite move of the offseason was that they signed Tory Craig. And my letter grade for that move would, of course, be an A. And the main reason for that letter grade being an A is because of his contract. The Bulls got him on a two-year, $5.37 million deal. This was an absolutely great move for the Chicago Bulls. I think this was one of those moves where you're going to look back on it and be like, how did the Bulls get him for that cheap? Because Torrey Craig is one of the best shooters in the NBA, and especially from deep. I mean, we saw it last season. He did eclipse 39.5% from downtown and we all said what is the number one thing the Bulls need to add this offseason it's shooting and the Bulls did that by adding a guy like Torrey Craig he's extremely versatile on the defensive side of the floor he can guard one through four and like I just mentioned he is a tremendous shooter he's really good at the catch and shoot um, ability and I do think Torrey Craig is one of the more underrated role guys in the league he actually had a great first round playoff series for the Phoenix Suns against the LA Clippers. That's why overall, like this is one of those moves where I think has gone underappreciated amongst NFL or NBA media. And this is why I think it was a great pickup for the Chicago Bulls. Like adding in a true three and D guy, you can never have uh, enough of them in the modern day game. And I think he just fits in really well to, uh, around what Zach Levine, DeRozan, and Nikola Vucevic want to do. You need those gritty guys. You need those guys who are going to dive on the floor for loose balls and just do the extra effort on the defensive side of the floor. Torrey Craig does all that, and he brings in much-needed three-point shooting ability. So that's why I'm giving Torrey Craig an A. Then the next biggest move that the Bulls made, re-signed Kobe White, the former seventh round or seventh overall pick out of North Carolina. I gave this a B plus. Um... I wanted to give this an A, but I will say I think the contract for me was a little was a little much. It was three years for $36 million. Listen, $13 or $13 million a year for Kobe White, I don't think it's the worst deal in the world, but maybe they paid a little more than I would have liked. I would have liked that to be around the $9 to $10 million range. But still, I still think it's a good deal. That's why I'm still giving it a B plus. The one thing with Kobe, we have seen the regression over the last three seasons. The points per game, I mean, they're on screen. I mean, you see them. They drop three points per game every single year. It was 15, then it was 12, then it was 9. Yes, the efficiency uh, has gone up every single year, but it's the points per game. I think that has to do with maybe his overall usage rate and his shot attempts per game not being as high as it was back in that uh, 2020 season. Obviously, the Bulls got DeMar and Levine in the 21 season. So I think a lot of that has to do with usage rate and just overall shot attempts. But my breakdown with Kobe... I'm a fan of his game. I think he's in a tremendous offensive talent, but he needs to get more consistent as a scorer. Kobe's the definition of just, you know, hot or not type of player. Like, he's the guy where if he sees the first two shots go in, he's kind of blacking out for the rest of the game. He's seeing only back rim, but if he sees a couple of miss in the beginning of the game, we've really seen his confidence be shaken and not be the most consistent guy on the floor on the offensive end. Then he also needs to add some sort of defensive ability. Like, I always take the great example of Steph Curry. When Steph Curry came in the league, he would get targeted all the time on the defensive side of the floor. But he was able to add some physicality to his game, some physicality to his stature, and was actually able to turn himself into a very, very solid defender. Where Curry is not hunted out every single defensive possession. So I think Kobe White needs to take some advice from the Steph Curry book and just add on more size to his frame, and I think they'll help him on the defensive side of the floor. But I want you guys, we're going to uh, hop in this little 2K style. I want you guys to give Kobe White a 2K rating. They do it 1 through 99. Obviously, you got guys like Jokic, LeBron, and KD. They're all in the 99 range. But give me a or give Kobe White a 2K rating. I'd probably sit him about like a 78, 80 overall. Now, the next biggest move that I think the Bulls made was signing Javon Carter. And again, I absolutely love this move. I think he addressed a big-time need for the Bulls, and that's to have a true point guard in the building. 
The contract they signed him for was a three-year, $19.5 million deal. You ask most people around the NBA, they would say, oh, I'm not the biggest fan of that move just because that's way he's, he got way overpaid for a kind of a bench rotational guard. Well, he's going to come to Chicago and probably be the starting point guard, so that's why I am okay with this contract. But, hey, Javon Carter, again, shooting, shooting, shooting. That's what the Bulls need to address this offseason and the dude shot over 37% from deep in each of the last four seasons. And last year, we really saw him take that next step up. He went up to 42.1% from deep. And I do think overall, he's going to add that defensive identity to this backcourt. Pairing him up with Io DeSumo and Alex Caruso, man, it could get dangerous for other teams opposing guards. And I do just want to give you guys a reminder to hit that subscribe button you know, it's a free, easy way to help us out here at the Bulls Report. So if this is your first time coming across the channel, lock us in. Just hit that subscribe button right down there. It really goes a long way here at Chat Sports. Hey, I'm a diehard Bulls fan, giving you guys some great Bulls content. So show me some love, and I'll show you guys some love back. Just go down there and hit that sub button. Fourth move that the Bulls made this offseason, they re-signed Chicago's very own Io DeSumo. You know, Io's got one of the coolest stories for the Bulls. He grew up... Uh, played basketball at Morgan Park, uh, the high school in the city. Uh, pretty you know, famous basketball high school in Chicago. Then he went to the University of Illinois, played two years there. Absolutely don dominated college basketball, especially that sophomore year. He was one of the best players in the country. And the Bulls brought him back this year on a three-year, $21 million deal. And again, I I'm a fan of this move. Like Overall, the Bulls offseason, I've been a fan of what they've done. Like, I would have preferred for the Bulls to obviously, you know, maybe retool a little bit, move off of DeRozan, move off of Vooch, kind of retool this roster. But with the moves they made, especially bringing a guy, bringing guy, or bringing a guy like Io DeSumo back, I'm a big fan of it. But the thing is with Io, we saw the regression last year, especially with the efficiency. I mean, his rookie campaign in those 77 games, he shot 52% from the floor and then also 37 and a half from deep. But man, you look at it this past year. In 80 games, he dropped that 52% from deep all the way down to 49.3. But especially that three-point shooting, ladies and gentlemen. He had it all the way up at 37.6% from deep. And I'm saying, Io DeSumo, you might be the greatest second-round pick in Chicago Bulls history. However, it dropped to 312 this following year. So overall, I'm a big fan of Io's game. Really strong defensive guard. Gives me actually vibes of a Bruce Brown type of role player in the league which I think he could really excel in but that efficiency it's got to get up there it can't be sitting around 49 and 31 percent from deep let's meet in the middle shoot 35 percent from three maybe shoot 50 percent from the floor and I think Io could be cooking with grease now the guess last move that uh, I wasn't a big fan of at all and this was re-signing Nikola Vucevic I gotta give it a D plus like listen I got all A's and B's up here I thought uh, AKGM did a great job except for this re-signing of Nikola Vucevic. I got to give that a D plus. And you listen, the contract's not even that bad. You know, $20 million a year for one of the better centers in the NBA. I get it. It's not a bid or it's not a bad move whatsoever, but it just is Nikola Vucevic a winning player. I thought this was actually interesting though. Mark Eversley, the Bulls GM, uh, he was asked, what was like the most important move that you wanted to make this off season? And he had this to say about the Bulls re-signing Vooch. He said, I'm excited for Vooch. There's not many starting starting centers in the NBA. So if Vooch were to go away, how would you replace him? Those options just aren't or are those options were just not appealing to us. So retaining him became the number one goal of the offseason. Oh, I kind of gotta say is like, um, what? That was your number one goal. You missed the playoffs last season with a pretty talented roster, and you said, Hey, our number one goal is gonna be the re-sign Nikola Vucevic. That's just like one of those eyebrow raising moves, head scratching, like just comments. Like I didn't know if that was just GM talk or whatever it was coming in from Mark, but I just got to totally disagree. And listen, Nikola Vucevic can fill a stat sheet better than anybody. Like you just th show these stats to somebody like you're saying, why are you complaining about Nikola Vucevic? Like, listen, he averaged 17.6 and 11. Like he's put up tremendous numbers and shit that year in 2020, when the Bulls did trade for him at that deadline, I mean, he averaged 23.4 points a game on uh, with 11.7 rebounds on incredible, incredible efficiency from the big fella. But it always comes back to the defensive side of the floor. Does his style play translate the winning in the modern day NBA? I think the jury's still out and I think I'm leaning towards no, it frankly doesn't. And I've always said this comparing, somebody actually commented yesterday of comparing running backs in the NFL 
to centers in the NBA. And I thought it was a great comparison. Because if you really do think about it, like the running back position in the NFL, it's very interchangeable. It's very replaceable. Probably the most replaceable position in honestly all of sports. And I think the centers in the NBA are starting to get similar to that. But obviously you do have the outliers in both sports. You got the Christian McCaffreys. You got the Derrick Henrys. Where if they are on your team, they will contribute to winning at a very high level. Just like how we have Nikola Jokic and Joel Embiid. But I think there is a massive gap. And I think Vooch just kind of falls in that middle of the pack range. That's why I'm just not the biggest fan of his game. And that's why I would have been more than okay with the Bulls potentially trying to fleece another team in the NBA into getting some draft capital for him. So we'll close this show by asking you guys is this. Because asking you guys is this. Because maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm not the only one in this camp where I'm not a fan of Nikola Vucevic. I'm really just generally curious to see what you guys got to say. Are you a fan of Nikola Vucevic? Give me a Y for yes or give me an N for no down in the comment section. And as always, guys, you guys can hit me up on Twitter. I'm tweeting about the Bulls all off season long. I want to be your go-to guy for all Bulls comment content. And you guys can do that by giving me a follow on Twitter with the handle right there at Pat Seeps. I'll make sure to put that uh, Twitter link or that link in the comment section and the description of today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching. That was me grading every single move the Bulls made this offseason. See you guys next time. Go Bulls.